Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. This YouTube channel generally consists of information about living in Israel. However, we are in extraordinary times and as my little act of uh, volunteerism for the day, I'm just chipping in here and there with information that I see that has isn't available in English or hasn't been translated in some kind of a format in English. So one example of this is these uh, the rocket and missile guidelines from Pikuda Oref. Pikud HaOref is the Home Front Command. It's the official government body responsible for uh, liaising between the IDF and civilians. And they promulgate these guidelines about what to do in, God forbid, the, uh, these kind of emergency scenarios. I just want to make one, a couple of points before I go into this. I'm making this video because they have this short video in Portuguese of all languages. But I think it's worth really going through this in detail. And uh, you may wonder, well, if it's on the internet, why do we need you to read it? Well, you might want to just listen to this at the gym or watch this on your TV. Um, I might even watch my own video to refresh on these because they're very, very important and uh, potentially life-saving. So I think they deserve a really thorough and slow read, which is what I'm going to do. Second thing to point out is that these guidelines may change at some point in the future. I'm recording this screen share on the 23rd of uh, October 2023 at about 6 p.m. Israel time. So what I recommend is, you know, they're probably not going to change in the next week or two or during this conflict, but they may update these in the future. So if you're watching this video in the future, um, check this web URL, put this into Google, go on to the official Pikuta Oref website. At the moment, that website is oref.org.il and uh, they have an English version and check what they say. Without any further ado or um, whatever, I'm going to go through the guidelines. Just make a couple of comments. From the top, what to do. When receiving an alert for a rocket and missile attack, enter a protected space according to the time available to reach shelter and remain inside for 10 minutes. So just a couple of comments here. Number one, um, according to the time available. So if you download the app of the Homefront Command, which I recommend everybody does. It's available for Android and iOS. You will put in your alert area. And if you don't know it, you can put in where you live and it'll identify your alert area. Once you do that, it will tell you how much time you have to reach shelter. Now, basically for missiles and rockets, this will vary according to where you are in the country. Um, the closer you are to the Gaza Strip, the less warning time you'll have. So if you're very close, like in Sterot, you might find it's only seven seconds. In Jerusalem, I believe it's more like 90 seconds, okay? A minute and a half, still not a huge amount of time. Um, so firstly, you want to familiarize yourself with the time that's available. Now, the second thing, remain inside for 10 minutes. So the reason this exists, and it's important just to know this in case you think it's a stupid rule, you need to remain inside for 10 minutes because after the uh, Iron Dome will intercept the rocket, there's a risk of shrapnel for 10 minutes. So that's what they say. So you're gonna hear the alert and then there is no all clear siren as people know, because there could always be more rockets. But if you believe it's the end of the rocket period, 10 minutes uh, more you need to stay after any uh, remain inside for 10 minutes. So let's now go through the guidelines. Um, they're very, very specific. Let's start with indoors. So the guideline is to enter a protected space that can be reached within the time to reach shelter available to you and the protection available around you based on the following priorities. Okay, so we're going to be going in, in terms of decreasing priorities here. Starting with the top uh, priority, I'm just going to actually really zoom in so this text is very easy to read um, however you're watching this. Mamad, mamak, mamam or a shelter. What are each of these things? So a mamad is a makomu gandirati. It's a protected room you have in your apartment, basically. Then there is a mamak. A mamak is a makomu gan kumati, which stands for a, a protected space for the floor. And then finally, you have a mamam, which is the one for the building. Or you have a shelter, which is a miklatsiburi. Okay, so basically, if you're new to life in Israel, after a certain point in time, they mandated that every new apartment needed to have its own protected space called a mamad. 
Um, now, you might be in the situation that you don't have a mamad, but there is a mamak. There is one on the floor. You might be in the situation that you don't have a mamak or a mam or uh, sorry, it's a bit of a tongue twister. You may be in the situation that you don't have a mamad and you there is no mamak, but there is a mamam. Um, the if you if you're new to your building, ask the vad bais and ask your landlord. It should be obvious if you have a mamad. It's a special type of door, and uh, ask your landlord is or one of these rooms a mamad. Um, ask your neighbors or the vad bait if there is a mamak and it's possible that if you live in an old building that and an old apartment that there is neither a mamad a mamak nor a mamam in that case you want to familiarize yourself with the location of your nearest public shelter called in hebrew a meklat zibori i've done a video before about how to find these in jerusalem i presume that different municipalities also maintain their own um, lookup systems so my recommendation to be prepared and i'm big into preparedness as a life philosophy would be go on that website identify your nearest three public shelters and visit each of them and the reason i suggest that is um you may find that they're unfortunately locked they should not be it's illegal but um this has happened in the past so i'd recommend just going to the uh, location because Firstly, you want to know exactly where the uh, Meklatsibori is. And secondly, you want to verify it's operational. Even when they should be operational, I would verify that. Close the door by turning the handle 90 degrees and make sure the external steel window and the inner glass window are both closed. Okay, second priority if there isn't, uh, if you can't reach one of these facilities is the inner stairwell. Now that should be an inner stairwell without windows, openings or external walls. Sit on the stairs and not in the floor space. In a building with more than three floors, stay in the staircase that has at least two floors above it. In a building with less than three floors, stay in the middle floor. So basically what you want to remember here is that you don't want to be at the top of the building. So if you're in a three floor building, an exactly three floor building, go for the middle floor. And if you're in a tall building with more than three floors, let's say you're in a six floor building, you'd want to go into the stairwell on let's say floor three right because you've got three floors above you and um if they're without windows openings or external walls if you can find a part of the stairwell that doesn't have any windows of it sit on the stairs there and not where there are windows right the objective here is to try to put you away from the weak points of the structure weaker points of the structure Final priority of is an inner room with as few outside walls, windows and openings as possible. Sit in an inner corner under a window line and not in front of the door. Kitchens, bathrooms or toilets cannot be used as an inner room. Okay, so um, let's say you the siren goes off and you you can reach some building within 90 seconds. So how are you going to find where to go in that building? So you're looking for a specific type of room, which is an inner room. Again, we're looking to avoid the vulnerable parts of the building with as few outside walls, windows and openings as possible. Just remember that the kitchen, bathroom or toilet cannot be used as an inner room, right? So you're looking for somewhere away from the outer walls of the structure. And also you want to sit in a corner under a window line and not in front of the door. So again go away from those more vulnerable points let's go let's move now on to the outdoor guidelines if you uh, cannot get into a um, structure a building within the alert period and you have no option but to stay outdoors so if you're in a built-up area well this kind of disqualifies the outdoor category but it says enter a shelter or a stairwell over the building so that's the priority so if you can get into a building do get into a building and look for according to the criteria, whether it's a ideally a mamad, less ideally an inner stairwell, finally an inner room. But if that's not an option, you're in somewhere rural, the instruction is as follows. Lie on the ground and protect your head with your hands. When a rocket hits the ground, the explosion blast wave generates fragments that can injure anyone standing up or sitting down. So get to the ground and protect your head with your hands. That was fairly straightforward. What happens if you're driving, if you're in a vehicle? Here's the instruction. Stop the vehicle on the side of the road, get out of the car, 
and enter a shelter or a stairwell in a nearby building. Okay, so stop the vehicle on the road, get out of the car and enter a shelter or a stairwell in a nearby building. However, if you cannot reach shelter within the time available to reach shelter, that's your notice period, which varies by locality, get out and move away from the vehicle to the side of the road or beyond the separation fence, lie on the ground and protect your head with your hands. Okay. Um, move away from the vehicle to the side of the road or beyond the separation fence. Like if there is a fence on the alongside the road, it's not the best English, but uh, I know what they mean. And same procedure as outdoors. So basically get away from the road. Only if you are unable to get out of the vehicle at all, stop at the side of the road and bend below the window line. So they want you to get out of the vehicle if possible. And if there's no other option, then you stay in it and you get beneath the windows. Okay. And vehicle. Uh, and now we get into the specific vehicle, uh, public transport. So what happens if the rocket siren goes off and you're on a bus at that time? So on an intercity bus and student transportation, the driver must stop the vehicle at the side of the road, open the doors, and the passengers must bend below the window line and protect their heads with their hands. Okay. On a city bus, so an intercity bus, we're talking about like a bus that goes between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, like the 480 on a city bus, we're talking about an intra-city bus like any of the buses running within a city. So slightly different guidelines. The driver must stop on the side of the road and open the doors for the passengers to get off and enter a nearby building. So it's assumed if it's a city bus, there will be a building. An intra-city bus, you might be driving through somewhere rural. City bus, there should be buildings nearby. If it is not possible to reach the building in the time available, let's we repeat the guideline, bend below the window line, and protect your head with your hands. So just remember in all these guidelines, we're trying to get away from windows, whether you're in a car or in a building. And finally, if you're traveling by train, the driver must slow down the train for 10 minutes and the passengers must bend below the window line in the carriages and protect their head with their hands. Important highlights, stay inside the protected space for 10 minutes to protect yourself from rocket fragments. Do not gather in the area of the event. Gathering is dangerous due to fear of an additional attack. Okay. If you are standing in the building under light construction without access to a protected space, you can reach within the time available to reach shelter, get out of that building, lie on the ground and protect your head with your hands. If you have identified suspicious objects, move away from the area, keep others away and report to the Israel police by calling 101 as soon as possible. And uh, stay updated through the Home Front Command, Pikuda Oref, messages circulated through official platforms and in the media and wait for further guidelines. So that concludes the, uh, the guidelines um, and the what to do. And there's a question and answers page that I don't think there's anything uh, that I want to, to go through, but maybe a couple. I'll just uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll talk about them. How to act if no protected room, shelter, or no room without external openings is available to me. Enter an inner room with as few exterior walls, windows, and operatings and openings as possible. So minimize uh, the number of, of these. Sit next to an inner wall below the window line and not in front of the door. And it reiterates that a kitchen, bathroom, or toilet uh, cannot be used. And there's a lot more of them here. So if you want to really drill down... Into the information, I'll put a link to this page in this video description. Just to say as well, I might share this information in a couple of Facebook groups. I'm not monetizing this video or any of the videos dealing with the emergency guidelines. They're not sort of uh, disingenuous attempts for me to promote this account. They're really, really making these uh, just in case a few people might be helped by receiving this uh, vital information in this manner. Thank you for watching this video and stay safe.